Hey guys, TPP here. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. So today I've got something new to share with you guys. Normally at this time of year, we're all itching to get out. In fact, I had four days booked off with Anita and our dogs. And unfortunately, as you can see, I'm still at home because we're still under a lockdown measure. In fact, it has been extended all the way to the end of May. So unfortunately, we still have to wait. So instead of wasting this time, I decided to take this opportunity to do something else that's canoe related. Okay, so here's what I want to share with all of you guys. Now, before I tell you what's in this big black stuff sack, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the company. It might be hard to see the logo here, but this is from Northwater Paddle Sports and they're a company based in BC, Canada. They specialize in making safety gear for water sports, such as canoeing. So what they've sent me here is a spray deck. So what is a spray deck? I know most of you already know what a spray deck is, and some of you even own one. However, for those that don't know, I'm gonna to touch on it briefly so that we're all on the same page. Now, a spray deck is simply a cover that goes on top of a canoe. The main purpose of this is to prevent the ingress of water. Now, of course, if you only paddle flat water, it really isn't necessary. But if you paddle rivers and you run white water, you might find a spray deck can come in handy at times. If you run rapids, you know that every time you go through a big rapid, you tend to get a lot of water into the canoe. And the more you get, the more risk that you have of losing control of the canoe and capsizing. So quite often you pull into an eddy after you run a rapid and you spend the time bailing the canoe of water. So you can imagine if you're running a river and it has a succession of rapid after rapid, you're going to spend a lot of time and energy constantly bailing the canoe, which is a pain. So this is where a spray deck comes in handy. So is a spray deck necessary? No, not at all. In fact, most of my river trips, when I run whitewater, I've never had a spray deck and I manage fine. Now, that doesn't mean to say that it was efficient nor easy, because quite often you spend that extra time and energy bailing the canoe, or sometimes you would have to portage around a big rapid. However, I've also run a trip with decks on canoes many times as well, and they are convenient, of course, for running through big rapids, but at the same time, when you have to portage or you have to get stuff out of the canoe, it's quite a pain because you have to open the cover and you're also carrying the extra weight of the cover on your bag. So there are definitely pros and cons. So why? Why am I installing a spray deck on my canoe? I know for a fact this deck will come in handy on a trip later this year, which I'll share more about in a future video. Every year, my friends and I will plan a big summer trip, and this is no different except for the fact this river has a lot of rapids, big ones at that. And I know for a fact many have run this river without a deck and have managed fine, but guaranteed, those that have a deck will definitely enjoy the river a lot more and the pros will outweigh the cons. Even though I've paddled many canoes with spray decks, I've never owned one personally myself. So this will be my first install and I'm definitely not an expert. But follow along if you like and let's go do this. Who knows, you may want one for your canoe and this install just may be helpful. The canoe that I'll be installing the spray deck on is called the Canyon made by a company based in Quebec called Esquif. This is a whitewater tripping canoe, so it is optimized for river travel and for running rapids, which is exactly why I'm putting a spray deck on it. Before starting on the canoe, I read the instructions twice to make sure I wouldn't make a mistake. Some things become more clear while working on the canoe, but one thing you definitely need to check before you start is to be certain you have all of the items for the install. Since my canoes are stored outdoors, the first thing I did was clean my canyon, as there was a lot of dirt inside, even though it was new. You want to make sure all the surfaces are clean, especially inside, since you'll be attaching anchors along the sidewalls. Next, the instructions state to lay out the spray deck on the canoe and lightly snug it into place with the end straps to ensure it fits and it all lines up. This is crucial because if there are any issues, you want to address it before you actually install it. 
Even though Northwater has the specs for the Skeef Canyon, there could be slight variations in the build. So this is why you actually send your canoe's measurement and speak with one of their reps before the deck is even made. This extra work and attention to detail really pays off, as this deck was a perfect match. So this is the template that Northwater provided, and this is what we use to mark drill hole, holes. Now we put the long side underneath the gunnel, and this is a five and a half inches to the bottom. So what we do is basically place it underneath here and then mark it. So at the bow and the stern, we will be putting three tighter spacings of the drill holes. So they are just spaced 10 inches apart. And then in the middle, they are spaced 20 inches apart. So the rope will go through the loops tighter at the bow and the stern and will be spaced further apart in the middle. So we'll be doing that on either side. And after that's done, what we're going to do is take a 3 16th drill bit and drill holes in all of the marked uh, spots along the canoe. Here are the loops that are attached along the edge of the spray deck. You start at one end and place the template under the gunnel between the first two loops and mark the spot. Then you do this two more times. I also measure between the marks to make sure it is approximately 10 inches. Although the instructions state you have 2 inches of allowance on either side, so it doesn't have to be 10 inches exactly. Does it look like it's too close to the left side? Definitely. But we probably should have started further up then. We simply made minor adjustments to try and center the drill marks as much as possible. This was repeated at the other end, and of course the other side. Then we moved on to the middle of the canoe, where we now spaced the drill marks 20 inches apart. I had initially planned to tackle this project on my own, but it was super helpful to have Anita's help several times as it made things a lot easier to do. So yeah, have a family member handy or offer your friend a beer, you'll appreciate it. Now we remove the spray deck, but before you do, do another quick check to ensure it is correct because there's no going back once you start drilling. In regards to drilling, nothing is as uncomfortable as putting a hole into a perfectly new canoe. But there's no other way around it, so just take a deep breath and do it. I promise, it gets easier after the first one. Once your canoe has enough holes to sink it, you know you're good. Then I went around and deburred the inside of the hole with a sharp knife. This isn't in the instructions, but it is important as you'll be attaching a patch over the hole. Okay, so now what we're going to do now that we've drilled the holes, we're going to prepare the surface to put these patches on. As you can see, there's a loop, and this loop uh, or this patch will go on the inside of the canoe, and this loop will come out and this is where the lashing work will go between this loop and the loop in the actual spray deck. So what I'm going to do is prepare the inner surface where the patch attaches and I'm going to rough it up with some sandpaper. 100 grit would probably do but I think I've only got 60 so I'll use that. You want to slightly overextend the area of the patch that is going to be scuffed. This ensures the edges of the patch will attach securely with marine adhesive. If you aren't sure, place one of the patches over the hole to get a better idea. I would also suggest feeling the area with your hands to confirm you've sanded it well. It's hard to see, 
but if you look carefully, you can see the roughed up area around the drill hole. While doing this, I did run into a slight problem. Both the bow and stern seats got in the way, and I couldn't sand the area completely, so I ended up having to remove both seats. Once they were removed, you can obviously see where I couldn't get behind the stringer, even for cleaning, so I took care of that first before sanding it. Lastly, I took a wet cloth and wiped all those areas to remove the fine dust and particles created from sanding. Now we were ready to move on to the next step. Okay, now we're moving along. So now that I finished sanding and I've also wiped the surfaces with water and a cloth, uh, there's one more thing I have to do before we attach the patches. So I've got to use alcohol to remove any remaining dirt and more specifically any oily residue that may remain on the surface and prep it so that we can actually add the adhesive and the patches next. Okay, so let's go do that. Now I'm gonna apply the patches. So on the side where it has the loop, I'm gonna attach Vinyl Tech 2000 Marine Adhesive on this side. And what, we've, what we're gonna do is we've got a little bit of wire. And what we're gonna do is thread the wire through the hole. It will go through the loop here. We'll bend the wire and the other end will, will go back out through the hole and we'll force it through the loop through the hole into the uh, to the outside of the canoe and then this will patch on the inside of the canoe so let's go do that and uh, let's see how it goes I first applied the adhesive to the sanded area then I applied it on the patch then you go ahead and thread the wire through the canoe and the loop before pulling it through and securely affixing the patch It's pretty simple, but it just takes time. One note about the adhesive. I didn't follow the manufacturer's instruction exactly because much of the highly volatile solvent had already evaporated and the adhesive was thick instead of being runny. This necessitated attaching the patch to the canoe immediately, which seemed to work but I don't know the long-term effects of how well this patch will stay attached. So I would advise to follow the manufacturer's instructions and have extra solvent available to thin the adhesive before using it if you also find it thick. Here's what it looks like once all the patches were attached. Not too shabby. I can now say I deliberately put holes in my canoe only so I could patch them up. The irony. Last, I reattached the seats and let the canoe sit overnight, allowing the adhesive to further bond to the respective surfaces for the prescribed time before the final test. Okay, we pretty much finished everything with the canoe. Now the only thing we gotta do is put the cover on and put the lacing through and see if it all fits. So let's give it a try. This will be the final test to see if it all works. After laying the deck out and snugging the end straps, we tied a bowline to the first loop. It doesn't really matter which end you start from. Then you thread the rope through each loop as you make your way to the other end.
Once you're done, the lacing should look like this, as you tie off the loose ends with a trucker's hitch. Now let's check out what the final setup looks like. I hope you enjoyed this build and got some insight into the installation. And if you're interested in getting one yourself, I'll link to Northwater's website in the description below. But most importantly, once you get it installed, you know what's next, right?